Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for your time and for joining us this afternoon. Uh, this is um, the first collaboration that we're having with uh, AP uh, Mahila Commission and also Red Drop uh, Movement. And, uh, you know, I want to begin by saying that um, this uh, day, 30th July um, 2020, um, is celebrated as a World Day Against Trafficking in Persons uh, across the world. The UN uh, General Assembly selected this 30th July uh, as a World uh, Day Against Human Trafficking in Person as part of their 2013 resolution to coordinate efforts against the human trafficking. The UN resolution sought to develop a plan of action that would promote a gender based age sensitive and human rights approach, you know, focused approach to examine the causes of human trafficking. It also strengthens, you know, it also focuses on strengthening the criminal justice response to trafficking and the universal uh, ratification of the UN Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime and the protocol to prevent, suppress and punish trafficking in person. In India, we have the ITPA that is, um, uh, Immoral Trafficking Prevention Act of 1958. The ITAPA bill is not uh, effective, it has flaws. And therefore, uh, the Lok Sabha has recently, two years back, passed the Anti uh, Trafficking of Persons Bill, uh, focusing on prevention, protection, and rehabilitation. Uh, at this moment, I wish to mention that uh, University of Hyderabad is India's Institute of Eminence, focusing on national needs and global standards. And under this uh, Indian uh, you know, in Institute of Eminence program, the School of Social Science proposes to have a flagship program on human security issue, in which uh, human trafficking uh, issue is an important component. Uh, and CISIP, the Center for the Study of Social Exclusion and Inclusive Policy, University of Hyderabad, have been collaborating with the NGOs, prominent NGOs in town uh, since the past many, many years, because the faculty in CISIP believe that um, it is essential for us to link with the grassroots workers and the grassroots organizations to provide the ground reality for us. You know, uh, since most of us live in ivory towers and it becomes critical for us now to link with NGOs during this COVID-19 pandemic because researchers, we cannot go to the field to conduct our empirical field work. So we are compelled to become, you know, armchair researchers. Uh, hence, uh, when uh, our dynamic young uh, uh, lady, Chrysalit, who is an IIM uh, Kolkata alumni, approached me and says, well, we, we should have this, I happily said to her, let us collaborate. And uh, because she's doing a good job, you know, young people are our social and cultural capital sociologically speaking, and we have to promote, we have to help and join hands together with our young people. And of course, AP Mahila Commission have a credibility in the past decades for working uh, on violence against women. And there is, uh, I mean, it is a privilege to have the chairperson, uh, 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 Srimati Patma with us today as a chief guest. And uh, I also would like to take this opportunity to mention that Center for the Study of Social Exclusion and Inclusive Policy, University of Hyderabad is established under the UCC scheme in February 2007. And it is absorbed in the department in the University of Hyderabad as a permanent center. And right now we have four faculty, Professor Raza Mohan Rao, Dr. Ramalu, Dr. Rani and myself with more than 60 research scholars, MPhil and PhD. And we focus on both research and teaching and has a full fledged uh, teaching courses uh, for MPhil PhD and two optional teaching course for the MA integrated studies. Now let me come to the objective of this symposium. Uh, 
Uh, the symposium aims to basically equip and empower NGOs rendering efforts in the space of anti-human trafficking for better efficiency and also to achieve some progress in the next few years, you know. And uh, most importantly uh, for us as a university uh, fraternity, the symposium aims to facilitate our students young students with emerging issues of research on human security issues. You see, human trafficking issue is at the forefront of interdisciplinary research, especially in the Western University. And India is catching up. Yesterday, the new education, uh, the new national education policy was released. And of course, the opposition parties are uh, up in roar saying that it was not passed in the parliament and things like that. But um, you know, according to this new educational policy 2020, all the colleges and universities across the country now have to focus on interdisciplinary research um, completely by 2040. And hence, I'm optimistic that our colleagues and our students would join hands together through research and publication to combat uh, human trafficking. Now, let me take another few, three minutes to focus on three important points uh, to set the tone for today's uh, uh, symposium. First point I want to mention is that there is a kind of causal linkages between human trafficking and the structural strain of state failure and the undaunted people's aspiration for material success and progress. And here sociologies, American sociologies like Robert King Merton's train theory is very relevant to examine the traffic victim's dream for comfortable lifestyle. And then in the process, course to become debt laborers and sex workers. See the traffic victims migrated to an unknown destination from their place of origin, you know, without having any idea about their employers and also the place in which they're going to stay. Strat, you know, statistically, uh, the most vulnerable victims of human trafficking are the poor, the marginalized and excluded communities. In Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, uh, particularly, child marriage is one of the major factors for trafficking, which is found in my research, which I conducted in 2012 to 14 under the UGC major project. The traffickers in the Northeast, um, you know, and also in Andhra and Telangana are local people. They're not foreigners, but local people. Uh, I have been conducting research on trafficking for the past 12 years, uh, not only by, funded not only by UCC, but ICCSR and have uh, published, selected publications. Uh, now, the second point I want to mention here is that uh, based on my work, Northeast India, including West Bengal, which Professor Biswajit Goes will be talking about in next few minutes. Uh, the, so the eastern part of India emerged as a source, transit, and destination for human trafficking. And in South AP in Telangana also emerged as a source, transit, and destination for human trafficking. Now, I want to draw your attention that during my field work last year in uh, 2019, in the month of February, uh, you know, uh, Nepali nationals, they arrived in Manipur via Delhi and Gohati, but they were rescued in the international border of Moray, that is a commercial hub near Myanmar, when they were in transit, you know, uh, because they make false passports in Myanmar. And then their destination we found out in the fieldwork is that of Middle East and West Asia. Now, trafficking is connected with neoliberalism. And you see, firstly, the nature of globalization in the global South has made us as unequal or you know, junior um, partners in this process where the debates are uh, basically debates on policing and also on prevention, prevention are the responsibility of the global South. Now, in our strange situation or strange scenario of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this leads to a cat and mouse game between the law enforcement authorities and the criminals leading to many gaps that are exploited um, at the maximum. 
So theoretically, I would say that a social scientist Manuel Castell's theory of network society is extremely important because he argues that the network society is a society whose social structure is made up of networks powered by micro electronics based information and communication technology. The criminal activity like human trafficking does not have an epicenter. So traffickers use technology in disguise for, uh, for uh, trapping the children, girls and women. And recently during this pandemic, you know, a lot of websites, a lot of social media has put up to recruit girls from the Northeast, you know, uh, as models. Uh, uh, and they were found to be fraud. Um, so that is the situation, strange situation that we live in now during this COVID pandemic. The third last point, the traffic survivors in my research do not understand the predicament they are in, but eventually, you know, they learn to, uh, they, 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 they come to learn of it. Now, some of the victims who are survived uh, by managing uh, to escape from the clutches of the traffickers, like for example, in 2008, when I started working, five uh, girls from Manipur were rescued in Kuala Lumpur nightclub. In fact, they ran away from the nightclub. So you see some of the victims, they were able to run out of the clutches of the traffickers, but they are unwilling to testify against the tormentors. So what is the result? There is a high rate of non-conviction of traffickers, and that exposes the loopholes of the existing anti-human trafficking laws. So I'm just setting the tone now for everybody to, you know, kind of have a sense of what we are trying to do uh, the whole afternoon. Now uh, I will call upon um, uh, the the chief guests. Um, our uh, respectable uh, Madam Patma to take her time. Over to you, 